Hi USBGF members and friends, this is Phil Simborg, USBGF Teaching Pro. Uh, here's a position that came up not long ago in a match. Uh, the score was two away, two away, red had doubled blue, so we're at double match point. Gammons don't matter anymore, all that matters is winning the game. Uh, blue is in a questionable back game, when I say questionable, the timing is kind of tough here. He's down 77 pips, which isn't horrible, uh, but uh, this is a tough one to play. Uh, I think any player in the world, including the best players in the world, would be challenged to play this game perfectly from either side. Uh, as you know, the best players in the world are likely to play at a PR rating of around 3 or so. Uh, I think it would be tough to play this game under 5. I would almost bet that the best players in the world would play this close to 5. Uh, and I would certainly have trouble playing this well, and I'd like to learn from the best players in the world how to play this. So uh, I'm, I've invited uh, two of the very best players in the world over to my place and they're here right now. I'm going to introduce them and have them play this out for us and then we can examine each play as they make it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Options, Board Configuration, and Animations. And as you can see, I've set these all at over 100. Uh, the, is the slowest that uh, Extreme Gammon can play. If you set it down to 50 or 60, the checkers will move very quickly. I want everything to go slowly so I can think about each play as these two top players are playing it. So I hit Apply, OK. Now I go to Setup, Play from Position, and let me introduce uh, the player to my right. His name is Mr. Extreme Gammon. He is uh, not as good as XG Roller Plus 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 or XG Roller who played pretty slow for me and I don't want to take the time to roll out each play so I'm playing uh, I'm having Mr. Extreme Game and play red and his opponent today is a very very strong opponent also Mr. Extreme Gammon is gonna play uh, blue so here we are the two best players in the world I would bet on these guys over anybody uh, and in positions like this, they play very, very well as well. There may be one or two plays that uh, where I would bet on Neil Kazaros or Mochi or Falafel or Matt Kongai or one of the top players to be better, but not too many. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's see how these two guys go at it. So I hit OK. Sit back and see what, what Blue does to... Yeah, Blue doesn't want him to make that prime. That was a key play. Red is not afraid to leave blots. Okay. Ah, blue chose moving up rather than hitting. He'd much rather hold the four point here. He knows he can time a four, a two four game a lot better than a two three game. So this is a real tricky dance between playing a back game and time. Oh my goodness, blue is exiting the back game. Something that I see experts do all the time, much more so than the rest of us. Um, <laughs> They try to give, go forward out of back games instead of just sitting back there and playing them. Will he make the four point? No. Oh my God, he's trying to get hit. He is trying to go back into a back game. He wasn't trying to go forward. There's an interesting move by, by Red. I would have to examine that a little bit more later. Hmm. Interesting evolution. Red certainly left lots of blots and so did Blue. Oh, he made the outside point, even though Red had two on the bar. I thought I would have made my opponent's four point there. I guess he didn't feel the need to do that. He's looking for structure on his side of the board more than he is worried about. I guess Red has very little to attack with without breaking his four prime, so Blue isn't worried about that side of the board. There's a lesson there. There's going to be a lot of lessons here when I look at it slowly. So just watch with me and see if you would try and guess what plays you would make each time. Hit him. Make the back of the prime. Try and extend your prime. He's going to hit him. Sure, he doesn't want him to make the back of the prime. Is he going to hit him? Yes, he is. He wants the back of the prime. We're fighting for the edge of the prime all the time in these games. The front of the prime and the back of the prime are the two key points on the board. That's where the battle is. The game is here, as the Danes say. It's at the front and back of the prime. 
Oh my goodness. He, rather than stack checkers, he broke his six point. Not sure I would have done that. I'm going to go back and look at every individual play later when I have time and really think about it. Blue certainly is going forward on this game. Did you think the game would look like this when we started? You think we'd end up looking at it looking like this? I sure didn't. That's what's so much fun about backgammon. There's so many ways this game could have gone. He really needed that six. Otherwise, looks like Red's going to end up with a one-point game. He needs a six. No. Nope. This is not the game I thought we were going to be watching. I thought we were going to be watching Red defending a back game and Blue playing a back game. I didn't know that Red was going to end up with a one-point lousy game like this. And it isn't that anybody played bad. They're both playing at zero. Zero PR. Well, let's see if almost always Red's going to get a shot here. The question is, is it going to be early enough to still have a chance to win the game? We know Red's going to get a shot. It's going to happen. The only one who doesn't get a shot here is me. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what happens. That was a great roll for Blue to be able to clear the five point that way. Red will have a shot. He'll get his turn. Here it comes. He did it too to make it exciting. All right. Here's a good lesson now. I'm going to get a good lesson on how to bring this game home. He's going to hit. He's going to hit if he can. He needs a four or a nine. He got the four and make the point. Make the bar point. Yes. Oops. Popped out. I still like Red's chances to get another shot. Here it comes. Got him. Get as many builders in place to make the eight point. That's his next goal. Hit him with a one. Sure. Hits. Huh. I would have giving myself a six builder there. Interesting that he moved that checker. He's going to make the outside point. Yep. Now, now the goal is to get another checker back. And Red's got a good chance to do that. Make the prime. There you go. Now that checker can't escape. And here we go. Here we go. Missed him. Oh, look at that play. That was great. To make sure he gets shots while the blots are still there. He broke the prime and hit him loose. That's a great play. Most people won't see that. I hope I would have. I think I would have. But a lot of people would miss that play. Breaking your prime and hitting loose. It's called the banana split play. Look at this. He really wants that other checker. If he can get that other checker, he's a big favorite. And he got him. Now Red's a big favorite. So what we thought was going to be an exercise in back game, we saw turn out to be an exercise of what we call bringing it home. Make the ace point there? Wow. Wow. That, I wouldn't have done that. i got to look at that play. Wow. That's play number 51. I'm going to mark that in my head. Can I mark that now? Play 51. Can I flag it? Flag entry. There it is. I just flagged it. I right-clicked and flagged it. Now I'm going to go back to watching the, the game. I right-clicked on the play, hit flag, because I really want to look at that play. Wow. Well, let's see what happens. Interesting. All right, I've seen all I want to see of this game. I want to go back to the play that I flagged. I can save the entire match. 
but I'm going to go back to play 51 that I flagged, put that play in. It's hard to do things while it's moving here. It's still going. Well, probably should wait till it's over, but I'm an impatient kind of guy. 54. Here's the play that he makes the one point. I'm going to go Control C, save the position, Control V, and paste just that position. And 5 4. 5 4. He makes the ace point instead of. Uh, by the way, there were a lot of other plays that I want to look at, but uh, I, I saved the game and can go back. I might have made the three point here. Um, interesting. I might have made the three point here. Some people might play 6 1 6 2, stop him from making an anchor at all and play an attacking game. That's an interesting play, too. All right, so let's first of all hit plus and see what XG Roller Plus would do here. Let me roll this out later. One. And it's pretty close between hitting off the two point. Yeah, these are all within point oh one five. Uh is making the three point really bad here? It's not on the list. <laughs> of course every play here is within uh according to three ply within three percent. But making the three point, uh, let's see where that is. I, I'm only showing the top ten plays. I'll show you another trick. I right click and hit um, show all moves. And now I can go down to uh, wherever it's making the three point is, which is, uh, uh, it's got to be here somewhere. Eight three seven three. Here, oh, here it is. It's the third play. It's point oh oh four. It's close. That was the play that I would would have made myself, and it's pretty close. So what I can do if I really really want to know uh, what's going on here, I can highlight these two plays and hit this button, which rolls it out. And about twenty minutes from now, uh, I can get uh, a reading on what really is the difference between these two plays. It's the making the one point wins the game eighty point original position that I had saved and play this out ten more times and just keep watching and see where there's a really interesting play or two that I really want to examine uh, because it's going to play out very differently depending on the roles. The point here is it's a great way to learn. Uh, it's a great way to watch the two best players in the world. A great way to use extreme gammon and uh, the sky's the limit on how often you do this and what positions you can do this with to see how games play out. When you just roll out positions by the time it's done rolling out, you'll see the numbers, but you won't understand how it got there. It's evolve, you'll see how this turned into uh, a one-point holding game for red and how blue was masterful enough to get out of that back game situation and go forward and, and how he played the checkers to do that. Uh, we, we don't see any mistakes by red. It was just a matter that the roles, uh, the roles dictated the plays which it would always do. It's, uh, is Beckham in a game of luck? Absolutely. When both players are exactly equal, then who wins is pure luck. And uh, do you, are there any two players, and they will both play many, many plays differently. Uh, and think about plays differently. They might be very, very close uh, at the end of the day as far as their PR level, but they'll make lots of plays differently along the way. So, this was enjoyable for you as an exercise. Hope you do it yourself and have fun. It's really, really fun to do. You can do this with any position at all and have extreme gammon play extreme gammon. And
figure out why it might be a good play. I can see now why making the one point is okay, is a good play. I can see how that can work. Even if blue comes in with a two or a three, he's not going to stay. gives blue two good numbers, any ones or twos. Uh, so by covering, he only gives them good twos and threes, and they aren't that good, and he's not going to stay there. So Quite a while, and uh, I may not get a third checker, and eventually he might just get lucky, roll double sixes, and win the game. So I can see the downside of my play, too. I hope this was fun and interesting for you. I always find this fun. Love to do it. Thank you for watching, and thanks for your feedback, and thanks for your support of the USBGF. For those of you who have USBGF website that are available for viewing by USBGF members only. Occasionally I do these public videos for anyone who comes to the Facebook site just to tease you, to let you know that if you join the USBGF you can see more in-depth video lessons on all kinds of subjects and a lot more benefits as well. We have a magazine every two months that's amazing with great articles and information and we have all kinds of tournaments and competition and prizes and all kinds of benefits from joining the USBGF. So 